in a village not far from here lived a little mouse uh, who was busy scurrying around picking up seeds and nuts. One day this little mouse heard a roaring sound, stopped and listened. My goodness, what is that? So I went over to a friend and said, did you hear that? Did you hear that? And then friend, no, no, get back and pick up your seeds and nuts. And so that little mouse did, but heard that roaring sound again. So I went over to another and said, did you hear that? Did you hear that sound? And his friend says, no, you get back to work. You've got lots of work to be done. Pick up your seeds and nuts. You know, and so that little mouse did, and, and as the little mouse uh, became aware of that sound, uh, also became aware that uh, the work that he, uh, that he was involved in required his whiskers to touch the ground. And so he picked up seeds and picked up nuts, but would pause and, and just look around and could see that people were busy scurrying around, uh, picking up the seeds and nuts, and they too all had their whiskers touching the ground. But that sound kept coming, and that drew that mouse into a curiosity. So there the mouse went in the direction of the sound and just paused, looked back, and you see that people were doing what they do. They've always done, but carried on. And it wasn't long before he met a, a stranger on the pathway. And the stranger says, hey, my little friend, what's your name? And what are you doing so far away from home? And that little mouse, never having experienced this uh, stranger before, said, well, my name is, uh, is Little Mouse, and I heard this sound, and I've come to find out what it is. Oh, says this, well, my name is uh, Brother Raccoon, and what you've heard is the sound of the sacred river. If you walk with me, I'll take you to that sacred place, and we'll talk about it as we go. And so they did. And so as they walked along, and they talked, and they... They, uh, they could hear the sound of the river getting louder and louder and louder until before them was this incredible uh, thing moving along. And never having seen this river before, this little mouse stepped forward and was just looking at it, encouraged to move closer uh, by this uh, raccoon. And as he did, he began to see that this, this amazing moving thing uh, curled this way and moved that way but it seemed to be forever and he just looked back and he looked at the raccoon and he could see this like wow what is this and uh, and so the mosla would get closer and he would look and he could see the reflection of himself there or herself and then just like whoa how did i get in there <laughs> and i was really puzzled by that and he'd get looking for reassurance and so the raccoon, a brother raccoon, says to him, you know, the answer that you seek, my little friend, will be found in, in, uh, in the answers will be found by talking with this person. So I'm going to bring you over. So they walked to, to the edge of the river. and There was a frog sitting on a pond. And he says, um, brother frog, he said, I, I have a little mouse here who's curious about the river. And I'll introduce you to, and then I must leave to do my work. And so there they went, and this, he went, and, and so now um, Little Mouse and, and was looking with Frog, and, and Frog says, you know the answer you seek lies in your ability to actually crouch down low, as low as you can, and jump as high as you can. But you have to trust it, because what you see will be meaningful in your life. And so therefore he thought about it, he thought about it. And they could see that there was some apprehension, so the little frog showed him how to jump. And so being mentored in that way, now that little mouse crouched down low, as low as it could, and, and used all its energy and might to jump. And when it jumped, it could see things differently i had never seen before. And when he looked up, he could see a dot in the sky that was circling, that disappeared as quick as he had seen it. But when it came down, he landed in the river. And that terrified that little mouse. The little mouse jumped out and sort of ran around in circles and his heart was beating and he went over to a frog and says, I just want to go home. I, I, I want to go home. And that frog in that very calm voice, they said, you know, the answer you seek lies in your ability to jump. And he says, but if you really must go home, just trust in that. And he said, as you go, you know you're going in the right direction by the sound. And when it gets quieter and quieter and quieter until you only hear it once in a while, you'll be home. 
but for doing this great thing, we're gonna we're gonna start calling you Jumping Mouse because what you've done and what you've uh, seen is really important to you, and it'll help you remember uh, what you must look for in your life. So off he went, and sure enough, as he was running back home, he was, he was afraid, but he was excited. He was a whole bunch of different uh, feelings in it. And, uh, and as he got closer and closer to his village, the sound got quieter and quieter until he only heard it once in a while. And then he came to the clearing where the village was. And sure enough, everybody there was still picking up seeds and nuts. But one had seen him, he paused and looked at him. And he was, you could see that this little mouse uh, relative was, uh, was all wet and got the attention of others and said, look, it's all wet. It must have been eaten by an animal and sped out. Maybe is isn't any good. <laughs> and so they all began to move away from him. And uh, looking at this, and being puzzled by this, uh, Jumping Mouse now realized that maybe there's no place for me there. Maybe there's something to what had just happened. And maybe there's something to that jumping what I saw. And maybe there's something to that dot in the sky that I need to kind of figure out. So he thought more about that. And by this time, when he looked back at the villagers, they were all back picking up seeds and nuts, you know, making sure their whiskers touched the ground. And so there, in his own reflection and quietness, he left the village again. And this time he went in the direction in which he saw the dot. And it didn't take him long before he got to a place which was a crest of a hill, a little hill, but a crest of a hill. And he looked back and he could see the villagers he looked forward, there was uncertainty and an unknown, you know. But he knew in order to find the meaning behind the dot, he'd have to go into that unknown. So he did. And he made that decision and off he went. And he ran, al ran along to a place where he saw an old mouse up and picking up different kinds of seeds and different kinds of nuts. And when he approached this older mouse, the older mouse looked at him and he said, oh, my little friend. He said, come, come, come. He said, uh, take a pause, you know, have some seeds and have some nuts. Take whatever you need. And he sampled this and he sampled that and he said, my goodness, he had never, ever experienced this kind of food before in such abundance. And uh, the older mouse says, well, my little friend, you can actually come live with me. You can have all the seeds and nuts. You never have to work in your life, you know, this is all provided. And so he tried some more and he was so excited. But he really was yearning for the dot in the sky. And he conveyed this to the older mouse. And the older mouse actually said to him, you know, my little friend, I've been to the river. I've jumped. This is what I saw, right? You know, make sure you're not making a mistake. And so that little mouse thought about it and he thought about what had happened at the river and he thought about what was being offered here and he thought about that dot. And so he was so grateful and he thanked that old mouse and he carried on. Right? And the old mouse carried on too. And so he went along and ran along. And then he came to a place in which there was a big, huge, mountainous figure uh, along the pathway that was rocking back and forth. And he walked right up close to it. And he looked up and he could see that this creature was moving. It was like a mountain in size. And, uh, so this little jumping mouse asked him, who are you, my friend? And um, just looked at him. And in a deep, kind of reflective way, this big, huge, mountainous creature said, uh, my name is Brother Buffalo, and I'm dying. And I'm gonna die if I don't get an eye of a mouse. Eye of a mouse. So he just ran away and went and hid behind a choke cherry bush. And his again, his heart was just a beating, and he said, die, eye of a mouse, dying. Brother Buffalo, you know, it's just racing, right? And then after a period, uh, he began to think about things and, and realize that this big, huge being was dying and was going to die if he didn't get an eye of a mouse. And so he thought about what that meant to give up, you know, what all of what that meant for him. And so he went over, and as soon as he thought about the idea of giving this eye, poof, there it went. And instantly that buffalo stood up, you know. It was even more mountainous than, uh, than it started out to be. And he says to his little friend, he says, thank you, my little friend, for your generous gift. I know now how I must help you. Run with me. Run in the sacred way of the buffalo. And trust in what you'll learn in that. 
and so they ran. And as he was running, he felt a power that he'd never felt before. He felt a strength that he'd never felt before. And he could see things in the way that he was seeing that he'd never seen before. And so they went and they went. And then they reached the foot of the sacred mountain and the buffalo said, this is the end of a journey for us. But just reflect on what you've learned. Trust that and journey on. So he did. And so as the buffalo returned to help others, this little mouse went up to the mountain. And he got about halfway up there and he came across a timber wolf, which brought some fear into his heart. And, uh, but he learned very quickly that this uh, timber wolf uh, was very absent-minded. And he looks at this little mouse and just couldn't kind of pull the stuff together that he needed to. He said, I think I am, uh, yeah, right. Uh, what else was there? Mm -hmm. Well, like it. so the mouse in his reflection thought like, oh, he needs help. So he thought back as how he helped the buffalo. And he thought now was say that the best way to help uh, this timber wolf is to give the other eye. So as he came to grips with that, uh, that generosity, off went the eye. And now he sat there with, with no eyes and with a different way of seeing things. And instantly that timber wolf says, thank you, my little friend, for your gift. For now I know how I must help you. I want you to walk with me in the way of the sacred wolf. And as we walk together, trust in the way that you're seeing things. I know it's the first time, but you'll see things in the way that will be meaningful as you reach your destination. And so he did. But the way that he was seeing as he was moving up to the top of the Mount sacred mountain was that uh, he was seeing from a different place. And he was seeing from inside himself. And it was in a language that he never understood, and he, but he was curious about. And as he got there, the timber wolf, and he talked and talked. And the timber wolf just said, trust that, that language, trust in what you're seeing, for it will be meaningful to you, and left. So sitting there alone now, and sitting there and reflecting on, on all the feelings and all the thoughts and the whole experience, there was an energy that came that was like the spirit of something that was growing and growing and growing. And it felt like an eagle. It felt like something big. And just as he made that uh, kind of discovery, his energy hit him and he fell asleep. And the next morning when the sun came up, he could feel it. He didn't know what had happened, whether he'd been eaten or whether he was still alive. Or, but he felt the presence of an eagle. He felt like he'd never felt like that before. And then he heard a familiar voice that said, You know, my little friend, the answer that you seek lies in your ability to crouch down low and jump as high as you can. This time, trust what you see. And so if, having had this incredible journey, incredible experiences, just trusted. Got down really low, as low as that little jumping mouse could, and jumped as high as he could. And when he jumped, the wind caught him. That brought him higher and higher. And as he got higher, he began to see in a way that he'd never seen before, with a vision that he'd never known was possible. And they looked and he actually was the dot that he saw in the sky. And now he was equal, sword. That's the story of Jumping Mouse. When we look at uh, the parts of the story, there's a treasure chest of, of wisdom in each part, right? And um, there's, a, there's a treasure chest of wisdom in the part where you look at the whiskers touching the ground, uh, walking with a mentor and the river gets louder, seeing the reflection, you know, in the river, uh, meeting frog and jumping, seeing the dot in the sky, you know, experiencing fear and wanting to go home to a place where it's safe and familiar, being rejected, right? And then having to go to a place where the crest of a hill is like the the threshold of decision-making. Do I go back or do I go forward, right? And then going forward, 
and then meeting an older mouse who had been to the river, had jumped, and had met the truth for himself or herself. You know, and then we'll say just being grateful and moving forward. And knowing we'll say that this mountain, this figure that you meet is dying, uh, will die if you don't get an eye of a mouse. And so sacrificing an eye allows the person to know how to help and then how you run and feel and grow uh, to a point where you have to decide yourself then to give up another, the second eye in order to go deeper, right? And then to jump again uh, and to accept the transformative experience, right? And become the ego that you're intended to be, right? And so these parts of the story are really profound. And I find that the best way uh, to, to actually approach the story is by simply asking you as the witnesses to the story and participants in the story is to, um, to say, is there a part of the story today uh, that stood out more than other parts of the story?